Hey guys, welcome to my anime tier list. Today I'm just going to go through some of my favorites and rank them accordingly. The first one I want to go through is Naruto. This is, a, this is about an aggressive fairy boy who wants to fight other children. It's widely known today as a pseudo-journalistic hit piece condemning a hijinks based economy. The production values leave little to be desired and the storyline functions as a sublime insight into a carefree world without concern for supply chains and franking credits. Franking from me, darling, it's a B. Next up is Death Note. Death Note's about a megalomaniacal sociopath who wants to become God. He aims to achieve this through journaling extensively. A series of startling fatal coincidences then lead him to believe his angst is responsible, but not even in the world of anime whimsy does correlation equal causation. The music and art design are iconic and brooding, which is to be expected from the show's executive producer Friedrich Nietzsche, making it a great pick for French teenagers who are one cigarette away from starting their own journal that makes people want to die. Die me up, son. It's a B. Next up is Avatar The Last Airbender. This is about a bold wizard's journey to becoming an arsonist. Through the use of the apocryphal Dead Sea Scrolls, protagonist Andrew Yang is able to conquer fear, save the day, and get the girl. This is a fun romp for kids of all ages, with visceral visuals, sleek sounds, and realistic war crimes. The version I watched had World War II footage of Stalingrad spliced into every scene where bending happens, but this only enhanced the experience. It's an A with the spliced footage and B without. Following up that is Yu-Gi-Oh! This is about a bisexual poker champion's friendship with a bulimic Egyptian man. They win several duels through the power of a mystical timepiece called the Millennium Falcon. The show features many iconic villains from ancient Greek folklore, such as the Series 1 antagonist Pegasus and anyone with an ethnicity other than Greek. It's a show about friends, family, and just wrecking idiots with your $1,500 deck. It gets a B from me. Next is King of the Hill. This is about a propane dealer's life in Dante's seventh circle of suburbia. Each character in the propane man's family embodies one of the four elements of propane, making for exciting adventures as they travel across the Earth Nation to find the Avatar and win a golden ticket to Margot Robbie's bathtub. The show's an absolute scream, with or without the recommended needles, so it gets a five from me. Following that is Thomas the Tank Engine. This is about sentient trains searching for meaning in a universe devoid of it. Thomas and friends are forever condemned to the railway tracks they call life, forever addicted to a black narcotic administered by their human masters. Triple T, as the fans lovingly call it, is a macabre mirror through which one reluctantly re-evaluates the human condition. The show doesn't shy away from themes of slavery, war, and the Sisyphean nature of the absurd as characterised by Kierkegaard, Camus, and later the Fat Controller. Chug on on, Tommy. Next up is Cowboy Bebop. This is about four lovable jazz enthusiasts and their passion for crime. This show is widely beloved for not containing any of the infuriating tropes common to live-action thrillers of this type. Set in British Columbia, the crew of the USS Bebop experiences a journey of self-discovery and a renewed sense of friendship as it flies across the Earth Nation in search of the Avatar. Gets a bit A from me. Following that is Wallace and Gromit. This is about a middle-aged man who goes off his medication and seeks enlightenment from his pet dog. As the series progresses, it becomes unclear where the man ends and dog begins, shown in a beautiful narcoleptic dream sequence that finishes the series. Tilda Swinton is criminally underutilized as Gromit, but her understated, otherworldly charm persists in spite of the medium. Gets a B from me. Following that is Avatar by James Cameron. This is a thinly veiled allegory for the persecution of Native Americans by European settlers. Not a good anime, but a great message. Next up are the Hindu Vedas. These are a collection of essential Sanskrit religious texts cataloguing the philosophical and religious beliefs of early Indians. They're split into roughly five sections. First are the Samhitas, which are the hymns to God, the Brahmanas, which are like the rituals and prayers the priests use, kind of like a dungeon master's guide, the Aranyakas, which are about worship and meditation, kind of like a player's handbook, the Upanishads, which is where you'll find the philosophical beliefs, and the Marvels, which were plagiarized wholesale by Stan Lee in the 60s. Overall, this is a quite a strong anime, and its following is absolutely devoted to this day. You'll find fan bases all over the world. Gets an A from me. This next anime is a sitcom idea I had called Geneva Unconventional. This would be about a zany secretary general of the United Nations who would get up to all sorts of trouble in their three minute lunch break. Every episode, there's a new secretary general as the old one has been fired due to antics taking place in the previous episode. 
This would give the series a great deal of staying power, a la Doctor Who or James Bond. Then, when the show gets enough popularity, we can have an actual former Secretary General on, or maybe even a political leader, whose life is the antithesis of everything the United Nations stands for. The following would be suitable candidates for this role. First, Jair Bolsonaro, for his neglectful coronavirus response, leading to 87,000 deaths and 2.4 million registered infections by July, not to mention strong support of Brazil's military dictatorship since at least 1993, saying it has led to a more sustainable and prosperous Brazil. <coughs> Brazil's fallen short of OECD benchmarks across the board, with only 49% of 25 to 64 year olds having completed upper secondary education as an example, which is below the OECD average of 78%. Next, Donald Trump, countless cases of ongoing neglect and misconduct. You hear about this guy on the news all the time, I won't get into it. Benjamin Netanyahu, indicted in five cases of breaching trust, accepting bribes and fraud. Isn't that a fun anime? He's destroyed hundreds of Palestinian homes in retaliation for crimes done under Israelis by minority extremists. But his continued occupation of Palestinian territories has been entirely unwanted warranted and despicable. Next, Bashar al-Assad, the author of Syria's civil war, using chemical weapons, torture and extrajudicial killings against his own civilians. How fun! An independent UN commission found at least nine intentional mass killings between 2012 and mid-2013. Vladimir Putin, violent quelling of free speech, Abdullah al-Ziz al-Assad, same thing. Recep Erdogan, pardon the pronunciation, regressive. Strongman politics, and power seizure that make the democratic Turkey of old cry. Take that, old Ataturk. Nicholas Maduro. Uh-oh, death squads! Kim Jong-un, crimes against fashion. Wearing jumpsuits all year round. In conclusion, I think this sitcom deserves at least a B. Please let me know in the comments whether you think different. This has been Anime Tier List. Go away!